But first of all, I want to ask a question. How many people in here are already engaged in filmmaking, any kind of filmmaking? Okay, how many people are already engaged or have been engaged in 3D filmmaking? Oh, pretty good. Not so more than I thought. How, any, how, anybody made any money out of it? Fewer. There you go. What Jim was talking about is a really important point, and I think that what I would just want to fly through here is it's important to understand where we are, how we got to where we are, because in my opinion, and, and it's shared with Cameron and a lot of other people, we are exactly where we're supposed to be. Anybody who thought the market was somehow going to be this wonderful utopia that as soon as everybody converted the theaters that the entire world was going to be watching 3D was getting gold rush fever. You know, the, that belief that you could spend $10 and go out and make a million because there's this momentum in the market. It was never supposed to be here. So flying through this quickly, 3D has been around since the 1850s when they first started doing stereo stills. Queen Victoria thought it was a cool idea and suddenly there were millions of slides all over the place that people were watching. And we keep having attempts First, patents for 3D moving images were in the 1890s. We had a quick attempt in the 1920s, which got washed out because of the Depression. And by the 50s, the 80s, and more recently, we have plowed our way through one continuing problem. Technology has been in the way of the progress to what was always originally intended. When people originally sat down and thought about cinema, the idea of cinema as an industry, the idea was that it should replicate what we see in real life, what they saw in the theater in 3D. But you just couldn't do it. So it's been the, that one second, it's been the limitations of technology all the way, but things changed with the digital revolution because the digital, ga digital gave us an opportunity to do away with celluloid and control what we were working with uh, in digital format. Next slide. So here's the point that Medusa comes into the market. I'm, gonna only, I'm not going to talk about the camera because that's not why I'm here, but this is what we started with. Two motorcycles glued together don't make a car. And the technology that's been used up until now has been based around the principle that two cameras need to be managed inside of some kind of grip equipment in order to create this imagery. And what we set out to do is to build a camera because we believe that in order to get access to the market in any kind of really effective way, we needed to create a tool that instead of costing, you know, five to eight, maybe $10,000 a day to rent, you could rent for under $2,000 a day. Next slide. There's the camera. If anybody wants to talk to me about it, I've got material on it. I'm happy to talk about it later. Next slide. Here's the truth about where we are. We've been through a phase, excuse me, I'm sorry to stand in front of you. We've been through a phase of what is peak of inflated expectations. You know, everybody thought they were going to make a billion dollars for nothing. Well, here's real life. It isn't happening. It didn't happen with the internet. It didn't happen with the arrival of Technicolor and color film. It never happens. What happens is a load of people who shouldn't be involved in it get involved in it, inflate everybody's expectation, then they all lose money, and what you get left with is you get left with the people who should be in it. And that's down here somewhere, the trough of disillusionment, because it's only people like us who <laughs> survive <laughs> through all of the quotes that you read about, you know, 3D is dead, it's all about 4K. Well, you know, he'll be remembered for saying that, I can promise you. The trough of disillusionment, we are here. We are rising up the slope of enlightenment. And this is, the point, this is why the top-down, which is what Jim's been talking about, the top-down is so significant because credible people, credible creative and production and articulate people in our field are using 3D as a tool to change the entertainment experience. It's not instead of, you know, it's not going to be like moving from black and white to color, but it's, it's a way of expressing ourselves in a way that has never really matured. And so they're proving that it's credible. But this doesn't help you. It doesn't help, actually, us. Because we are bottom feeders. We're currently down at the bottom end of the marketplace looking for a way in, a way to be engaged. But between here and here, something very significant, next slide, something very significant is going to happen. A piece of technology and, a, and, the, and the existence of the internet is going to transform the market. 
Right now, 3D is dead. It's all about 4K. Poop is all I have to say. 3D studio production and 3D television production, as Jim was saying, is on the rise. We've got more productions going on in 3D in the UK right now, five times more productions than we did last year. Global depth of cinema presentation, well, uh, conversion uh, is as you know almost. It's not complete, but let's just say that the, it's a tidal wave of transferal from film presentation to digital presentation, mainly because the studios save a fortune in theatrical print distribution by being in digital. But by being digital, you might as well be stereo digital. So now we have the depth of penetration that we need to reach the audience at the theatrical level, and at the same time. All TVs, smart TVs and everything are becoming 3D capable. So it doesn't matter what you buy now or how much you spend on a TV. You can buy a 3D TV for $300 in a supermarket in London right now. Everybody will have a TV eventually that's 3D capable. Go ahead. Next slide. OK, so what's happening? Here is the opportunity. This, uh, this is just my sort of euphemism for the way what's happening. Artists who have been painting are experiencing the opportunity to try sculpture. And the sculptural experience is a different one. And the tools that you need are different. But the result is a, a way of communicating your art to people that you haven't um, exploited before. As Jim was saying, almost all tentpole pictures are being made in 3D. 3D is much more focused now. And here we have Gatsby, a drama. Uh, Jim showed you the slide with you know the amount of action films that were watched in China and all this kind of stuff. Well, Here's the thing, you know, theatrically, most of the 3D movies that have been released have been action pictures. Television has been mainly sport. Ma why? Because that's where the audience is. But let's just watch, because when you deal with intimacy in 3D, it completely changes the way in which you experience a film. And, and, and same thing on TV. And this is going to be the, f the create, I think is going to be the creative avenue that starts to really engage the y y women and, and people of a younger age. Um, expanding death, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so content is king. Here's the thing. This is the absolute truth. It's been, it's been the truth in our industry for more than 100 years. No technology has ever created a market. The content creates the market. The technology is a tool to get to the market. So what needs to happen is content needs to be created. We've got it coming from the top down, but we haven't got it from the bottom up. And what is going to change everything is what Julian said, is that the arrival of autostereoscopic tablets will completely transform your access to the market. And this is really what I'm here to say is that you will be able to monetize 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour of stuff that you shoot. You could shoot something in a day, and by the weekend, you can be, will be able to earn money from it. This is all about to happen. Because, but the problem is, is that if you are making 3D tablets, if you could make one, and we know that Apple have got patents, Samsung have got patents, everybody's ready to do it, why would anybody buy it? because there's nothing for them to go yet really to watch. So the hardware manufacturers need to wait until there's confidence that there's an output machine there that's going to deliver content to their audience. Now their audience, watching a tablet, is an audience that is engaged in getting on the internet, going to YouTube, and watching that funny clip that's only 30 seconds long. Well, those clips are actually, some of them, the ones that get a lot of hits, are earning money. So what we've got to look at is how to foster production at the bottom end to help give confidence to the hardware manufacturers to come with the hardware. Now, everything that I've done has been based on the principle, frankly, of information that I have that 2014 it's going to happen. I don't know when. I don't think that they'll really announce it at CES because it's all a bit too early in the year. And Samsung and Apple, you know, they're always vying for the positioning and everything like that. But 2014, I've got every indication that it will begin. Your opportunity is to find ways, just like you do in your own independent production, in 2D, you know, there's all, you know, you get a job, you get a gig, you get a salary. But when you're not doing that, you're talking to the friend who's got post-production and you're trying to work out how you're going to get a piece of equipment so that you can film something that you're interested in doing. Well, at the moment, there are millions of hours, probably, 
for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of hours, of 2D content in the marketplace to serve the demand of that marketplace. But in the 3D marketplace, there is an absolute vacuum of content. And so I invite you, you can just flash through the slides, actually I don't need it anymore. These are the people who are going to be delivering it. I invite you to consider to get involved, to learn what you need to learn, but get involved in producing from the bottom up in order to create the market from which in the long term we will all benefit.